Hi, this is your host Sapin Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have two guests, Satya Sankran, Chief Operating Officer at Cloud Casa by Catalogic and Richard Oliver, Chief Executive Officer at Ondet. Satya, Richard, it's great to have you both on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil. Thank you, Richard. We cover both Cloud Casa and on that here. So our audience, they are fully aware of both companies. So I will not ask you to tell us about Cloud Casa and on that. But what I'll ask you is that uh, talk a bit about uh, this partnership. Uh, what does it look like? How you folks are partnering? Or is this the first time you're working together or you have been working together for a long time? On that has been active in the ecosystem for some time working with the, the CNCF. And uh, we've we've been working with the goal of being open um, and integrate with a variety of different uh, platforms like different Kubernetes providers uh, and also with backup. And we've been working now closely with Cloud Casa for some time uh, since inception, really. And we've just achieved a certified integration. And now we're collaborating on our joint go to market. Yeah, no, it's been awesome working with uh, uh, on that and, and team. Uh, look, I think we, we, we kind of go hand in hand uh, in this ecosystem. Uh, a lot of what uh, uh, Richard uh, and his team does is is really just enabling customers to run stateful applications at scale. Uh, if you need to maintain state, you need to have great storage, you need to have great availability, you need to have great performance, but you also need to have good backups, right? So I think uh, uh, our partnership is all about uh, enabling those customers to have uh, a, a functioning application and a good night of sleep. Backup can be seen in so many different ways. Like uh, not having a backup is like flying without a parachute or you know a seat belt in a car or things like that. Uh, talk a bit about uh, what are some of the pain points that you have seen in the industry as the market is also with the Kubernetes market is um, mat has matured, production workloads are there, where you felt that, hey, you know, we should work together to bring more value to the whole ecosystem. I can talk to what we're seeing in the storage side of the house, and that is just an ever increasing number of critical workloads moving into Kubernetes. And as you've mentioned, uh, yeah, the more critical the workload, the more important it is to have backup and recovery. So um, you know, whereas at the its inception, uh, backup and recovery was less important for some of our customers because we're still in the dev cluster um, being tinkered with, but now we're seeing really serious financial workloads telco workloads where you can't operate without having a good backup and recovery solution, which is why working with Satya and the Cloud Casa team makes complete sense. The lineage for Kubernetes is all about stateless applications. It was everything was ephemeral. Uh, everything was elastic, everything was ephemeral. But I think as you start using these uh, applications in production, you realize that you have important data that needs to be stored in some shape or form. What's the point of being able to do compute if you can't actually store the results somewhere, right? Uh, uh, and, and what's the point of being able to do analytics if you can't log uh, the output somewhere? All of these are essentially driving and, and it's making stateful applications kind of, uh, while Kubernetes lineage is stateless, it is, it, it, as you go mainstream, stateful applications are here to stay. And, and you're seeing CNCF surveys, you're seeing Datadog surveys, all of these guys are basically projecting that, look, this is growing at even faster rate than people adopting Kubernetes itself, right? Because everybody sees once they go production, they need to run stateful applications. And, and, and that's really what we're, we're enabling. Uh, we are essential service for these stateful applications. Right? This is not a nice to have. If you are running stateful applications, you need storage. You need that storage to be performant. You need that storage to be available. You need that storage to be replicating, and you need to have good backups. So we're we're really just essential service to enable those stateful applications to run. And those where mission critical applications, uh, uh, you know, are 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 running state uh, stateful sets. When the DevOps teams platform engineering teams, uh, they uh, take leverage of this combined offering that you folks have versus what they were doing uh, earlier uh, to kind of, you know, how their, you know, day-to-day -day operation changes for day two. Uh, and also, uh, we also talk about, you know, developer experience or, you know, depends on how you look at it, operation, operators have experience that 
with this offering, suddenly their life has become much more easier. I'll also talk a bit about uh, about some industry movement which is happening where a lot of folks are looking at cost cutting, layoffs are happening, so teams have to become more efficient. So these offerings are going to, the vendors are going to help companies become more efficient. So talk about that. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the primary drivers for moving data into Kubernetes is to reduce cost. So moving away from managed data, database offerings or moving from legacy systems into Kubernetes and, and using the existing teams to run those applications more efficiently uh, in, in a cloud native way, not necessarily in the cloud, more often hybrid cloud. And so uh, one of the unique values that we collectively have is helping the engineer, so the person on the coal face having to go and solve these problems quickly and efficiently um, and serving them in a way that they want to be served, which is ultimately through a self-service channel through an uh, as-a-service type offering. And Swapna, this is uh, very much an extension of what's happening in even the mature ecosystems around VMware and so on, right? What you do see is you tend to pick the best of breed storage vendor, you tend to pick the best of breed backup vendor um, in, in order to put together your stack. It's not so uncommon that you're running, you know, a Dell EMC for storage, but uh, a, a Veeam or a Rubrik or a Cohesity for 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 backups, right? So those uh, uh, kind of combinations are, are something that our, our users are, are really used to. They see it going on in their enterprise. It's happening so far in the VMware side, and 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 now I, I think the same requirements do exist. You do want a best of breed storage solution. I think on that run some benchmarks to show that you know, they are faster than perhaps uh, uh, any other solution out there in, in, in the market today. And you do need a best of breed backup solution. It's a, again, an essential service that you don't wanna be doing a lot of self-managing for. And, and, and it's, it's a service that is primed for being delivered as a, as a service model where uh, you know, folks are happy to just sign up for an SLO or an SLA, and then just make sure that the backups are getting uh, uh, taken and, and have that peace of mind for those users. There was a recent report uh, that found that on that it delivers a kind of the most efficient performance for throughput and latency compared to other solutions. You did uh, talk about, you know, Portvox in terms of cost, but let's also talk in terms of performance as well. Yeah, thanks, Wapnil. Um, we did conduct a report quite recently by the independent analyst, Chris Evans from Architecting IT. That was uh, really focusing on the uh, real world workloads like running MongoDB or Post Postgres and doing a, a benchmark comparison where we came out about a uh, 30% performance advantage over other solutions in the market. But actually, surprisingly, our customers with this new world of, of hybrid cloud uh, are more focused on the cost. And when you're paying for every IOP, uh, increased performance means uh, reduced cost. And so the reason we can do that is through our architecture. Ultimately, we've been designed from the ground up to be container native. All of our data services are in line. So from application to disk, it's a single threaded approach. And that's how we get the low latency performance. The other thing is that we're, we're platform independent. We don't have any, what you can refer to as kernel modules, uh, which also create complexity in terms of data operations, uh, but impact performance. But moreover, uh, running in these hybrid cloud environments where the Kubernetes and Linux layers are more locked down, such as Linux real time, um, other cloud storage solutions can't run in those environments. And we can run down to a single or three node cluster in AWS. And so that independence gives us the advantage not only to be faster to reduce cost, but to solve this hybrid cloud problem that our customers are trying to, to move towards to give them more, more choice. And of course, to do that, we need to have, uh, we need to have a, a backup uh, platform that enables us to solve the same problems in the same way. Cloud Casa were named, you know, uh, a leader and outperformer in its radar for Kubernetes data protection report by GigaOM. Uh, talk a bit about, you know, uh, that report. And of course, you know, you, as I said, you know, you answer a lot of questions that I was going to ask that why uh, they saw you as a leader there. Yeah, uh, uh, Swapnil, uh, really humbled uh, and, and, and happy and proud of our, our team uh, to have gotten that uh, leader and outperformer tag. Uh, only a handful of vendors got the leaders tag and, and, and even less number of vendors got the outperformer tag. And we're, the, we're one of 
uh, I think just a couple of vendors that got both the leader and, and, and the outperformer tag last year. I think it's a reflection of two things. One, um, I think it's, it's, it's our focus uh, on, on the Kubernetes ecosystem and the cloud native ecosystem, right? Um, every one of our features that we've added, uh, whether it's about uh, enabling security scans and vulnerability assessments on the clusters that we are protecting, or enabling, uh, you know, backup of cloud configurations and not just your Kubernetes ecosystem uh, 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 resource protection. Um, all of this is about delivering the the right outcome for our customers. I think mean, that's been our focus, and 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 this report, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, took the right approach and said, you know, we're going to focus on who is delivering the best protection in the cloud native and Kubernetes ecosystem. I think our focus there certainly helped us here, um, because if you look at that report and who we're surrounded by. We're surrounded by hundreds of millions of dollars in funding and hundreds of millions of dollars in acquisition and billion dollar companies in, in the backup space. And, and yet I think we're, we're placed in the core and that's without having raised any funding until uh, today and, and, and with a fairly small nimble team and all with the ability to focus very clearly on Kubernetes. Um, we're called outperformer just based on our performance in the last year. Right in the in the last year, we've added support for all three big big cloud providers, uh, EKS, AKS, and GKE, um, and that means we work with the cloud providers directly, and 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 uh, we can inject our agents, back up how this is configured, and and again use that in, uh, infrastructure to spin up new clusters. We've added security capabilities. Uh, we're adding support for KubeWatt, uh, which is again where uh, you're going to see a lot more. Uh, uh, um, this is why VMware has been scared about Kubernetes to some extent because it's it's only a matter of time before VMs are running inside Kubernetes, right? And you need to be able to support that. And our job is to follow the data. If the data is going uh, uh, to these workloads, our job is to protect those workloads and deliver that best outcome. Uh, and 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 we're again very happy and humbled that uh, uh, GigaOM and team. Uh, gave us uh, 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 kudos for our focus on this space and also recognized what we've been able to deliver in the last year. And don't take that for granted. We want to be there even closer to the nucleus um, in, in the report next year. Uh, but but it's, it's great recognition for our team and something I'm very proud of. I think, Sathya, it was a very good point talking about being Kubernetes focused. That's where we have absolutely something in common. And kind of two things come from that. And the first one is, our developers don't want to talk to traditional storage salespeople. Our customers just want to self-serve. They want great documentation. And then the second thing is, if they need help, they need to speak to a Kubernetes expert. It's not a storage problem generally in these type of situations. It's how do I architect my solution for Kubernetes and think um, Cloudcaster and on that together are Kubernetes experts. And that really what makes us unique in as a combined solution. Um, delivering for that developer, platform engineer, DevOps engineer persona. Satya, Richard, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this collaboration. And as you folks said, you know, the whole focus is, you know, on, on the Kubernetes and making things also easier for teams there. So thanks for sharing those insights. And as usual, I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Satya.